I'm Professor Dr. Vignes Warren, Professor of Neurosurgery and the Head of the Department of Surgery at University Malaya. I'm also the Director of the Centre for Biomedical and Technology Integration or CBMTI. So we were one of the first groups that pioneered the use of uh, 3D printing for training in neurosurgery. When we first started to develop our models, we only had printers that could print in a single material. And the problem with that was we had difficulties mimicking skin and bone and cartilage and mucous membrane and tumour for instance. Once we uh, got hold of Astratasis multi-material printer, we were then able to print models which could mimic, for instance, the texture of the nose, the linings of the nose, as well as the more firm and harder tissues at the back of the nose. And this we found very useful, especially when we were wanting to teach our trainees how to handle various tissues. Uh, one of the issues was colour. I'm uh, Yuraj Kumar Balakrishnan. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at CBMTI. If you look at this uh, particular model here, this is basically done by the C2 machine, uh, which allowed us to print in various different materials, but it was just one color. We then had to basically inject a certain dye into a, a cavity in order for us to create what's called a tumor. So the new printer that has come out from Stratasys, the J750, has overcome the problem of colour. And this allows us to create models with both texture and colour variation, and so mimic actual tissue handling and tissue appearance better for these complex models. My name is Pepper. I'm a uh, professor of ear, nose and throat in University of Malaya. When you use a 3D model that comes with a tumour or a lesion, you actually replicate a real life situation. So it's very important to have colour. You need to see that the bone is white, the mucosa is pink. Only if there's a colour separation, then only you know you're in the right plane. So here you have a model of the head based on a patient with pathology, and you're simulating the entire surgery exactly as how it is before the surgery itself. So this is exactly like a flight simulator. A pilot who sits and does certain hours in the flight simulator before he gets certified to fly. The surgeons that train on these models are much better prepared in terms of uh, dealing with complex surgeries simply because they are able to train and retrain on these models until they perfect certain procedures. And the most important thing here is the model allows the usage of the relatively same equipments that they would be using on the real surgery. We are also using our 3D printers to develop prototypes uh, of various tools and devices. In addition to that, we have also been developing models to explain to patients about surgery. The ability to print all this model at one go, put in various different materials with the colour in it, all this is only possible with the PolyJet technology. 